Hello everybody, I'm Pearl. I'm Bob. And we are just passing through. And this is our next day. Come on and join us. And you'd be joining us in Washington State. At Long Beach Thousand Trails yeah. Campground. It's not our favorite park, but it's right on the ocean. Right on the ocean. Yeah, it's, it's very convenient. Short walk to get there. Today we were out walking with Charles and Abby and the fog come in and it got really thick was and there's almost nobody on the, well there's a lot of people driving cars and stuff. Well there were people driving yeah. But uh we walked maybe half a mile or three quarters of a mile and Abby says how because you come out of a row of bushes and stuff when you hit the beach and it all looks the same just a whole row of trees and bushes <laughs> yes it how does. are we going to find our way back and, and the reason for that is a lot of the places that we've been to they have markers where you come out uh -huh. so you're at mile marker number 12 when you go back but this had no marker no marker tinker come here tinker come here good girl yes good girl Mama said you're a silly goose. So Charles cut a big rut in the sand, you know, just past where the waves were breaking. <laughs> so when we came back, we'd see that. But the tide started coming in and apparently washed his mark away because we yeah, didn't see nothing. We did nothing. not see no mark <laughs> left. But we uh, we found our way back. But it, it's beautiful. It's nice. And it's in the low 60s. Yes. Temperature is just great. We feel guilty. Everybody we know just about in, in 90s high, or a oh, hundred hundred yes yeah. so this little strip on the coastline on the pacific northwest it just stays in, in the, the mid 60s mid year 60s. round i think yes it's awesome because not 50 miles you go up over a little a range of mountains cascades or something like that but it's get to portland and it's 95 90, i think yes. almost 100 so if you start this RV lifestyle, you got to put the Pacific Northwest on your uh, list Agenda. of places to be in the summertime. <laughs> it is a good place to be. It's very comfortable. What do you yeah. got? Stop. Starfish. Starfish? It died. What's his name? Star. Star? <laughs> what else you got? A uh, shell. Oh, you're so lucky. I know. This one's golden. So we're going to be here a few more weeks and then we're going to turn around and start our slow migration. Well, we're not going to start migrating too quick. We've got a grandson We've getting married. We've got a wedding to go to Yeah. on the 19th. Yep. And then uh, shortly after that, depending on temperatures, we're going to start migrating to Yuma. Back south. Yeah. Back in the heat. And as most of you know, we purchased a uh, home back during the winter when all this COVID stuff started going in Yuma. And we were there a not month. even a month barely a month yeah, yeah. so we kind of got all of our storage units not kind of we got all of our storage units emptied out and pearl got the whole house decorated we got most of the stuff we're going to use in the house and decorated we still have it several bedroom sets some furniture and just stuff to get rid of well what most people do before they start this full-time rv lifestyle is downsize so we're going to get back and downsize uh, downsize and do a house. lot of reorganization both in the house and in the rv and garage sales and right and uh, just all the ways to get rid of stuff but that's kind of what we want to talk about is it everything you see about trying the full-time rv lifestyle and we were the same way uh is downsize downsize sell the house you know most of us need that wad of cash when we sell the house and at least eliminate that uh monthly mortgage payment and then get rid of everything we didn't we just could not come to an agreement on what to get rid of right. and stuff so we paid like 350 dollars a month well it started out under 300 a month right. probably 270 or 80 or something ended up being 300 and that's one of the problems with storage unit is once you get your stuff in there the they start raising up. the rates every year <laughs> we'd pay a year's rent at a time and as soon as it's over they raise the rates for we could pay it again it was just they and i you know that's the business model but it is a big expense if you store it so getting rid of it does free you up we certainly can see that but we had the intention of probably living in the rv much much longer full time five or ten years until we couldn't i think that's what we kept saying until we couldn't health wise right. or something right. or pearls driving once 
either my my backseat driving declined or her actual driving declined, we would have to stop. Oh, this is turn left here, right here. Thanks for letting me know. Well, the GPS was sure hollering out, I turn left. Missed it. I was busy looking at the scenery. Yeah. <laughs> what did I lose? Uh, I don't think we lost anything. Did the bathroom door come open or something? Oh my! But with the COVID, that sped up our timeline. It did a lot. And we're glad we bought the house. We're very anxious to get back and kind of get it set up. We want to build us an outside living area. We have a great patio with a nice uh, covering. And we want to get some color and some, just to make it fun to right. be out, live outside in the winter. Build a little bit of an outdoor kitchen. Yeah, yeah just, exactly. Yeah. So a lot of the RVers, it seems like, are looking either have already got a home base and are going part-time or they're talking about it and that's kind of what we're thinking about in a lot of the conversations we've been having with folks lately and i i had heard this before and and we kind of fallen into that same bracket of how long would you do this full-time lifestyle when you decide to do it and most people a lot of people say don't limit yourself don't say we're going to try it for a year or five years whatever right. but i really kind of think there's something to the three year for a lot of people you know you do the east coast and winter in florida and you winter in texas and do the west coast and the pacific northwest and winter in arizona uh, cover some of the, the dakotas and you know central part of the country you do that in three four five years and a lot of us kind of maybe get our feel, especially us, we're older, we're in our 70s. And we don't move near the pace of most of our friends. 50 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> so you, if you're younger, you may certainly do it longer. Right. But it, it's just another, we want to bring that up. You may not, even without COVID, you may not want to do it that long. And that being said, you may not want to get rid of everything. You may right. want to consider storing more stuff if you've got hobbies and gotten you know, a lot of tools or a lot of whatever fishing or hunting or sewing or whatever it is that you enjoy doing and have been kind of building up your whole life you may not want to get rid of that or you may want to think about it a little more there is an argument for hanging on to it because now i was really i was mad at pearl because she wouldn't let me get rid of stuff and pay it we had to pay all those fees now i'm glad that we didn't which happens a lot. More and more, the older I get, the smarter Pearl gets. It used to be the smarter my dad got, my parents got, but now it's the older I get, the smarter Pearl gets. So I'm glad that we kept it. So kind of think about that. Our, our storage units, as I said, we had two of them, and they totaled in, in, right around 300 bucks. It ended up being 350 50. bucks. The house that we bought there in Yuma, it's costing us, you can see on our monthly expense report, I, probably most of you don't see that but we do that every month and you can find it there on our channel the last three months I put in there what it costs us each month just to uh, we don't have a mortgage so that's not on there but it's the insurance and the property taxes and the utilities right. uh, maintenance uh, rodent stud uh, prevention all all those things that we feel are important that we're paying and that's running us right around 600 bucks so it's only yeah it's only about three hundred dollars more than having our stuff in a storage unit and plus when you have it in a storage unit i don't know how the heck you sell it you can't really show it that well unless you right. take a lot of pictures of it but if you got your dining room table in the back of that ours is 20, 10 or 12 however wide it was by 25, 25 foot deep and the other one was 10 by 10. you couldn't get back to the stuff in the back so i don't know how you'd show it or sell it or it was whatever. absolutely yeah. jam-packed both of them were so if you store it you're gonna have a hard time if you change your mind in a couple and of sell. years and try to sell it that yeah. i would have won the argument after two years i think and got to get rid of stuff if we could figure out how to get rid of it right <laughs> but i couldn't so anyway think about that it may not be as much to if you can you know a lot of people use their equity to buy their rv and I understand that or they can't afford to do the rv and and maintain those mortgage payments so that's just something you got to get a pencil and paper and see if you can figure out 
but it does although it's very freeing to be able to if you're in Nevada and you find yourself up in Maine to not have to worry about coming back to Nevada and checking on stuff you can right. drift on down to Florida and then go to Virginia or you know just you don't there's nothing pulling you back other than family if you have family there but uh there is another side of the argument for maybe you want to keep a, a house especially if you've got good neighbors to kind of help watch it right you need a low maintenance yard you start doing landscaping and all that stuff that's another reason we sold our other house we had a lot of maintenance oh. uh, it, it was not uh, easy to maintain that house and we were always worried about it so anyway we'll know more in the spring how this works out about it because we haven't lived in our house hardly at all once we've lived there during the winter for three four five months we'll know how much the expenses how much they go right, up right right in Yuma we've got the thermostat set for 93 degrees and it never moves it goes down at night in the morning the temperature goes like from 85 to 110 or 15 well, it the air conditioner comes off and only keeps it right at 93 that's that's hot so uh, I think it's running us 80 bucks a month for electricity but we'll know more after we've stayed there for a while so think about that while we while we're on this video we'll talk a minute about I think everybody most all of you know about we're doing a uh, boondocking rally yeah next exit boondocking rally and we've met up with a ton of you guys we love meeting up with everybody and so we started talking about it last year we did a little rally with five or six of our friends and that was awesome and none of them knew each other until we had the rally exactly and now they are as good of friends with each other as they are with us they're always emailing and and talking to each other and all of them are going to come well no pat and chris are not coming back right they're staying with their both them their moms their are moms alive in ohio yeah and they're staying back there to be with them spend some time with them and build them a right. barnum a barn barnuminium barnuminium <laughs> out in the middle of a cornfield so they got a lot of work they got to level the cornfield down it's right on the river i forgot the name of the river but it looks I like a beautiful remember. place once they get it all done so we'll miss them and their unicat and their 2600 watts of solar they put on oh yes so pat and chris if you change your mind come on down we got come plenty of room <laughs> but uh everybody that was there last year they're going to help us this year uh get everything organized we're going to have some question and answer uh sessions okay. some actual seminars, seminars yeah on solar and thousand trails and boondocking if you've got any questions or things you're not sure about if you're thinking about transitioning into this full-time rv lifestyle uh send us an email our email is bob or pearl at gmail.com send us an email and tell us what you're thinking about and what your concerns are and and uh maybe we'll do a seminar if we get several people interested in the same thing or a question and answer session right. we'll answer those questions and we'll video all of that even if you can't make it it'll be probably in the video uh, we may even video the seminars if they're pretty good. Terry and Cindy have volunteered to do one. And Terry used to run a big RV park in Texas. And yes. Cindy is a big travel agent. So they've traveled all over the world. I mean, they've got a lot of experience and knowledge. Yes, they do. So th that one for sure we'll probably video. But we got a lot more people. I think uh, Dave and Karen are coming. And they've been doing this for five years or something. I think five or six so years. So we'll get a lot of knowledge out of them. And we're going to have a little rock painting contest, I think. Everywhere we camp, you see these rocks that the people have painted up really colorful. You've collected several of yes. them, huh? And I think that that'd be a good thing for you to do, too. It would. But we'll do us a little uh, rock painting. Similar. We'll have some prizes. We're going to have some uh, uh, Next Exit Quartzite 2021 material, some T-shirts and jackets and coffee mm -hmm. cups. Hopefully there'll be a store down here once I figure out how to get them into the store if you want one of those. But uh, it should be fun. The thing is we've had way more people say we're going to limit it to 50 coaches. And we've had way more than that people say that they're thinking about coming, want to come. I mean a lot of them uh, probably won't be able to make it because it's four or five months away. Things happen. And, the and COVID going on. COVID and kids big... and grandkids getting married and just stuff happens. So I know a lot of them won't make it. So there's still plenty of room for people. But I'm sure it's going to more than fill up. So be sure and email us and let us know if you for sure know you're going to make it. Right. Uh, the better. And kind of tell us, you know, whatever you can tell us about when you're fixing to retire. Do you have experience 
uh, boondocking or RVing, uh, just tell us, you know, about what's going on with your RV life. And we'll start a list and we'll start a little email. We'll start a little newsletter, keeping everybody updated, maybe right. giving some tips so you'll be prepared. And one thing we're going to do is, you know, it's not, it's totally free. It doesn't cost anybody anything, but there are going to be some costs. We're going to have to get some banners in a, a PA system and we're going to have a, maybe a, some pancakes or hamburger cooks out. You know, we're going to make it really safe. A lot of hand sanitizer and face masks. Yeah. But what I would like to ask you guys to do is if you think about it, our link is right down here. Our Amazon link at, uh, on our main YouTube page. If you use our Amazon link, if you're going to go and buy something anyway, click our Amazon link and go buy it and we get a small commission. We'll dedicate all that money to the expenses. Right. So it, no matter what, it's not going to cost you anything, period. Well, doesn't it cost $40 for their... Well, it does cost $40 for your camping permit your camping from the permit. Bureau of Land Management. Right. But, I mean, we're not going to charge anything. Right. So we hope to see, you know, meet a lot of great... What we're going to get out of it is making some new great friends. Yes. And all of us that are going to be there that's got some experience sharing what we've learned. And we're going to learn probably... A lot from you guys too uh, yes but if you think of it on our youtube channel use our amazon link go ahead and buy what you're going to buy and then that'll send us a little commission and we'll use that to pick up the expenses on the uh next exit boondocking rally pick up some of the expenses yeah <laughs> hopefully picks up all the expenses well that would be sweet <laughs> and along kind of talking about expenses we're wanting to give away some prizes there we have uh three or four of these portable power stations and we've got a uh, blue eddy Citizen, I got another email from them today. They've got two more that they'd like us to review. So, and Jackery's got a 300 watt. They want us to do that review. Yeah, if we do these other, these next two or three videos, video. we should have five or six to give away. And those are valued from two couple hundred dollars up to 500 bucks. Right. And uh, Jackery's given a 500 watt solar, uh, 500 watt portable power station and a 100 watt. Uh, solar panel so, and that's right. like 800 bucks so there's some pretty good prizes so anyway that kind of we just wanted to catch up talk a little bit about full-time part-time keeping your home storing your stuff if you got questions about the rally or or something that you think would be good to cover or something we need to think about for the rally to make sure we take care of to, because we want to make it safe we're gonna right. have a little temperature gun checking people's temperature right and it's not just because we want to know if you have COVID. It's for everybody's well-being. Just to make everybody a little safer. Yes. Everybody and, feel a lot safer. And, and more and, comfortable. Yes. Yeah. And to be honest, if you're not comfortable with that, or if you think that this COVID is just uh, whatever, then we ask you don't come. Because we want everybody to feel safe. Whether right. it does any good or not, I don't have any idea. But we want people to feel safe. We want to do what we can to make it safe. Right. And if you think you can't, uh, if you can't play nice, then don't play at all. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that kind of covers it. That tells you where we're. Oh, and our overheating problem. We ha I think we've got that. We may have that solved. We're gonna we're gonna do some more work when we get back in Yuma, but we went over several hill. pretty good little hills. That was not warm outside at all, but we went over some thousand foot pretty hills good. in just we'll a real short distance. Minute. Not well. I, I don't know that we hit 200 degrees. I don't think we hit 200 yeah. by any means. huge progress so thanks for all your ideas and suggestions yes. a lot of them have worked and we seem to be on the downhill side no pun intended of that overheating problem hopefully we'll know more when we get down <laughs> to nevada arizona california right where there's the some pretty weather yeah hot weather and pretty and good inclines. pretty good hills so that's when we'll know but uh, as of right now everything seems to be working pretty good we still got a slide that's giving us a hard time but oh, the last yes. two or three times it's worked great 
So we have our fingers crossed on that. Knock on wood. Yeah. So that pretty much covers it, folks. We appreciate you watching. Until we see you guys again next time. Keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. And we'll see you at the next exit. Yes, we will. Bye-bye, Bye-bye, folks. Bye, folks. Thanks, baby. Thanks. That might work out okay. Okay. everybody welcome to our next exit i just want to come out here and ask you one little favor just take a second and hit that subscribe button it just takes a second it helps us out a lot and lets us know you like the content of the video and if once you watch the video if you do like it give us a little thumbs up give show some love to an old man so i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you at the next exit enjoy the video